everyone welcome back i know it's been a while since i posted um a video um the reason for that is because i've been doing a lot of different things and you guys will see what i've been up to very very soon but today's video i wanted to come at you with a custom wig making series i've gotten a lot of questions comments dms on how to make the perfect wig um you guys have been telling me that you're having a lot of issues with making a wig for yourself as well as for someone else so i decided to do this um super detailed video or tutorial to show you exactly how to make the perfect lace frontal wig like a pro i'm going to be showing you guys what supplies you need uh, to make a wig, uh, how to sew down a lace frontal, how to sew in your wefts, how to make sure that once you take the wig off, the wig still um, it fits your head, and everything else. So if you guys are interested, um, definitely keep watching the video. Hopefully this uh, video won't be too long. I believe it's probably going to be two parts, so make sure you guys check out part one as well as part two. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. This is the dome cap that I am using, so I'm going to go ahead and place it. So you want to adjust the wig cap to make sure that it's fitting down on the canvas head. And try to, you know, say and mimic the way that it will sit if you were putting the wig cap on your head. You don't want it the wig cap in the front to be too far down. You want to make it seem like, okay, this is the face. This is where the hairline starts. And then, you know, this is where the ears will be. And this is the nape of the neck. Um, I went ahead and placed the lace frontal onto the wig cap but there's one thing that i'm going to do i'm going to actually cut the ear tabs off because um i really don't like the full length of a lace frontal now that i've went ahead and cut off the ear pieces this is how my frontal is sort of looking right now um as you guys can see i've already bleached the knots on this frontal uh this is an old frontal but i love it so much because it looks so realistic but if you guys are interested to see exactly how i customize or bleach the knots on my frontal i will um put the link to the video up above but so what we're going to get into now is we're going to go ahead and position this frontal onto this wig cap now mind you guys when it comes to placing the frontal you do not want to place the front hairline right at the very front of the wig cap you don't want to do that what you want to do is you want to pull the frontal down maybe about one uh like a half or one inch in front of the front of the wig cap okay and then you want to pin the back down just to make sure it's not moving make sure everything is flat as possible make sure that the very front of the wig cap is right at the middle I went ahead and positioned the front so as you guys can see right here is where I'm going to start sewing and then I'm going to sew all of the back that looks like this and as you guys can see that frontal piece or the strip on the frontal piece is laying down flat that's what you want and the other side looks flat as well so that's exactly how your frontal should lay on your wig cap before you start sewing now in order to sew the frontal you're going to need two uh, needle and thread so I'm going to take my first needle and thread and I'm going to start sewing down so pretty much I am sticking the needle on the top fabric please you guys one of the main things that I've noticed or I've heard is that you guys are sewing through the elastic band do not sew through the elastic band because if you do nine times out of ten that unit will not fit your head anymore because you pretty much made it super super tight 
okay so there's a top piece of fabric that looks like this if I can pull it up this is the top piece of fabric this is the only let me move in closer this is the only piece that you should be sewing through when it comes to sewing your wigs okay so I'm only going through the top piece of fabric to sew down my frontal and I'm just pretty much only doing a traditional stitch technique which is going through the wig cap fabric going through the uh, lace frontal and then just pulling it out that's a traditional stitch method okay make sure your stitching is close oh babe 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 So I've went ahead and sewn down both sides. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and sew down the back of the frontal. And the way that I sew down the back of the frontal is I sew a little bit on one side and then I switch over to sew down the other side. The reason why I do that is to make sure that the back of the frontal does not start puckering. And then if it does start puckering, then your uh, lace frontal will not lay down flat. So that's the reason why I'm, you guys are going to see me sew one side a little bit and then the other side uh, a little bit okay so the way that I do this is instead of doing the traditional sewing technique I'm going to do I think it's called the blank stitch method where you place the needle and thread um, halfway through the frontal and the wig cap and then you take this piece here and you wrap it behind the needle and thread and then you pull through so let me see if I can get even closer so you guys can see what I'm talking about so like I said I take the needle and thread I put it halfway through the weight cap and the frontal and then I take the piece of the thread and I wrap it behind the needle and then I pull through So same thing again, and you guys will see the difference with the stitching once I start stitching more. Now, you kept the front, yeah. All the time that I've been right here with you, you haven't said a word, no. And I've been trying so long. Okay, so this is how it looks. I'm not for sure if you guys are able to see that because the cap is so dark but yeah you'll get you guys will see it more once i start sewing down the webs so as you guys can see i sewed a little bit of the frontal on one side and so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to sew a little bit on the other side and i'm just going to go back and forth back and forth until i completely sewn down the front Okay, so now that I went ahead and sewn down the back, what I'm going to do is just take this needle that was over here and I'm just going to overlap this needle over here just to make sure that everything is secured. So this is pretty much my last stitch. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and tie a knot and then I'm going to just cut off the excess thread. So pretty much the way I tie the knot is I wrap it around my finger and then I turn it and then pull the needle through and then tie it off. And I usually do this twice and I usually do it on both needle and threads. Same thing for this needle that was over here. Tie it off.
And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut as close as possible to the knot that I made and we're done. Alright, so if you guys can see, this frontal is super flat. It's laying down flat. There's no puckering. And if you sew your lace frontal like this every single time, you wouldn't have any issues with your frontal not laying down flat when you install it onto your head. So, if I was to part it, it's flat. In order to sew down your first bundle, the first thing that I do is I go ahead and take my needle and thread and I sew in the back of it. So I stick the needle and thread through the weft and the knot that is on the other side is going to be behind or in the back of the weft. So when I start sewing it down, you won't see the knot that's on the thread. It will be um, laying against the wig cap. So one of the techniques that I always use to make sure that I'm able to wear my unit up in a ponytail is the way that I sew the first weft. So I'm going to start pretty much where I kind of line up where the weft is supposed to go is I pretend where exactly the back of my ear is going to be at. So pretty much the back of my ear is going to be about like right here. So I start the first weft about right there okay and that's how it should be and the reason why i sewn through the weft first is because this weft is not going anywhere i don't i don't have to like try to hold it down so it'll stay in place it's staying in place just like this so i start with the traditional technique first i sew through the fabric as well as the weft Make sure that the beginning of this weft is sewn down. And then once I do that, I go ahead and start with the um, blanket stitch method, which is wrapping the, the thread behind the um, needle and then pulling it through. So I'm sewing at the very tip of the back of the wig cap, okay? And remember, do not sew through the elastic band. You only want to sew through the top piece of fabric. That's it. So you're going to keep doing the same thing until you get to the other side. And you're going to stop where the back of your other ear should go. We ain't got to worry about nobody else or no. Let's have some fun tonight. Oh, I'm pretty much done with the first row. As you guys can see, hopefully I can, you guys can see it's very neat. This is not going anywhere. That's the reason why I love this type of stitching because your weft is not going anywhere. It is tightly and properly attached to the wig cap. So I've gotten to the very end of my first needle and thread so I'm gonna actually go ahead and tie this off and then cut it off and then start with a new needle and thread so the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys is how to do the fold over method I do not cut the wefts when it comes to sewing down the bundles and um, making a wig the only time that I do do that is when I get closer to the frontal or closer to the front um, a closure so here's my new needle and thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the top fabric only. And this is pretty much how you would start a new needle and thread. Go through the top fabric first, pull it through, and then continue to stitch. So I do the traditional stitch technique, which is just going through the fabric and going under the weft. 
I do it about maybe like two times. And then I continue on with the blanket stitch method. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do the fold over method. So I'm going to do my very last stitch and the way that I do my very last stitch to make sure that the weft is not going to move is I pull the needle and thread halfway through and then I actually take the th piece of thread and then I wrap it around the needle twice just like that and then I pull it through and that is going to secure that weft see the weft is not going anywhere it's not sliding anything so in order to do the fold over method all you have to do is take your piece of weft and you're just going to fold it over fold it over make sure if you need to use a t-pen to hold the weft in place so it won't drop All right, so the weft is folded down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my needle and thread through the weft, through the top piece of fabric, pull it through. And you're going to do this a couple of times just to make sure that fold over piece is super, super flat. Okay. And if you need to just use your finger to hold it down even more as you guys can see I'm using my thumb to make sure that that piece is folded down as flat as possible and then after I do that then I'll just start back again with my um, regular sewing technique okay all right so the next thing I'm going to talk about is make sure you guys know how to space apart your wefts okay because that can make or break your your custom wig okay so when it comes to placing or spacing out your wefts it all depends on how many bundles that you have and how much hair is in each bundle so let's say that because I'm using three bundles right now and my bundles have pretty much about uh, three ounces 2.5 to three ounces of hair in each that's a lot of hair so I would be able to just do a finger with a part per row when I start sewing down my um, my wefts now let's say that if you want to pull in four bundles of hair I would say do about a half an inch or a half of a finger with a part when you're sewing down your wefts now let's say that you only have two bundles of hair two bundles of hair I suggest you use about one finger or one and a half finger apart because you're going to run out of hair if you try to sew your wefts close together because if you think about it you don't have a lot of hair you only got two bundles of hair and if you don't have a lot of hair in those bundles you, once you get up here you're going to run out of hair and then your your wig unit is not going to be finished okay and what people don't realize when you make your unit you're going to use a lot of hair once you get to the crown and once you get to closer towards the front of the frontal okay that's where most of the hair or most of the hair that's going to be used on your wefts that's a lot of space here as you guys can see the nape of the neck is only a little bit of space but then when you get closer and closer and closer up to the frontal this space here that's a lot of hair that you're going to have to use okay to close this up so like I said I would suggest that you guys kind of figure out how much hair is going to be used when it comes to making the wig and then thinking about how much space that you're going to put between each weft right now I'm doing um, a finger width apart okay and that's for right now because you don't need a lot of hair in the back or you don't need to stack your bundles on I mean stack your uh, rows on top of each other when it comes to the back 
And if you need to, just to make sure that your weft is not, you know, um, all over the place, you can use your T-pins to keep the wefts in place, okay? Yeah. Oh, if you didn't love me, I'll still love you. And if you didn't want me, girl, I'd still want you. Whenever the sky is gray, you make it blue. So I am close to finishing the second row. And I wanted to show you guys this. Um, if you want this area to be seamless as possible. So let's say that if you wanted to pull back your hair. Like let's say that if you wanted to, you know, if the wind blows and your hair gets blown back. You don't want to see any wefts, okay? You don't want to see any tracks. So in order to cover that up, you want to make sure that every time you get to the edge of your wig cap on either side, you want to make sure that you're curving your weft upwards. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So as you guys can see, that is where the first weft was. And this is the second weft or the second row. And I'm going to sew as close as possible to the first weft, okay? So I'm going to sew as close as possible. So as you guys can see, that's where the first weft is. This is where the second weft is laying. I'm sewing it close as possible. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start curving the needle. I mean, I'm sorry, curving the weft upwards. And this is going to help with getting that seamless look when you wear your wig unit, okay? So I've gotten here, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start on my third row. So I'm going to fold back. I'm doing the fold over method again. Hold that weft down. Sew it in place just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And then start sewing the third row. So you're pretty much just doing the same thing over and over again when it's when you're in this area of the uh, wig cap. Nothing really changes. You're just doing, repeating the same steps over. Make sure that you're pinning everything down. Because if you guys do not notice, when you make your custom wig, the wig cap tends to move. You're pulling. The reason for that is because you're pulling, you're yanking, whatever, and that moves the wig cap so you want to make sure that if the wig cap is moving reposition it because if you don't reposition it once you get done with making the wig your wig is not going to fit properly so i'm always making sure that i'm repositioning i'm adjusting the wig cap just to make sure that it still stays in there's something about the way you do what you do oh. now tell it something i don't know what you do oh. But girl, it's something and I don't know what you do No, no, I don't know, no, no No, 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 no Girl, I feel love when I take a look at the sky, oh. And I have never been in love this way, oh, no, no Cause girl, you're so special to me Even if you didn't love me if you didn't love me, I'll still love you And if you didn't want me, girl, I'd still want you Whenever the sky is gray, you make it blue There's something about the way you do what you do Now girl, it's something, I don't know what you do But girl, it's something and I don't know what you do No, no, I don't know, no I'm done with um, the 
first bundle I'm done sewing that in so I'm just pretty much showing you guys um, like I said I, you just all you have to do is just do the same stitching technique um, just back and forth back and forth you know fold over the uh, woof to start your new row so this is pretty much where I ended for the first bundle and I want to show you guys what I meant by when um, I told you guys to sew as close to the edge of the wig cap as possible because as you guys can see you can easily pull this up like if you were going to work out and you wanted to pull your hair up and like a ponytail you definitely can um, another thing that you guys see now is when I was telling you to make sure that you curve your uh, wefts when you get to the edge of the wig cap because it gives you a seamless look as you guys can see you can't see any um, tracks or any webs all you see is hair so it will look like that um, all throughout the edges of the wig cap all the way till you get to the um, frontal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on my second bundle And it's pretty much the same as if you were sewing the first bundle in. You want to take your needle and thread. You want to stick your needle through the back of the weft. So that knot that's in the thread is on the back of the weft. So as you guys can see, the thread is through the weft. So I'm going to start where I end it. I'm going to stick my needle through the wig cap, pull it through. And that second bundle is right there. So just make sure like you hold it down so it won't move all over the place while you are sewing that piece on. Time now for the gal, I'm up in the place. Yeah, they see us come through, get a squad, some space. Get down, get down, girl. Ain't nobody take no. Okay, so I've pretty much uh, sewn in half of the second bundle, and this is how it's looking. So I got about this much space that I still need to fill in. And luckily enough, I still have half of the second bundle as well as a full third bundle. So um, this is where I'm going to start cutting the wefts because I'm getting close to the frontal and I just want to make sure that everything lays down flat so I won't be doing the fold over method anymore. So I ended my uh, weft over here so I'm going to take the remaining second bundle and I'm going to start sewing um, everything down. Okay so with this row I'm going to be sewing the weft and attaching it to the um, side of the front toe. Yeah. And if they try to tell you something, tell them fast some stairs or run up. Cause I ain't trying to be nobody, body, body. I ain't trying to tell you how to live your life. I don't know. You do what you have to, I know that it's hard. On the low. Bounce around, bounce around, two different jobs. Okay, so I'm in the process of closing up the uh, wig, so I'm still sort of um, sewing the webs in a U-shape like I um, started at the beginning. Um, one of the things that I am doing now is I'm making sure that when I get to uh, the frontal, I am connecting a little bit of the weft to the 
to the frontal, okay? Because you want to make everything connect. You don't want um, the wefts to be away from the frontal. So that's what I'm doing. And like I said, when I get to closing up the unit, I always start cutting the wefts because you don't want your your wig unit to be bulky so that's the reason why when I'm when I start to close up the unit I start to cut each row or each weft and this is going to allow your unit to lay super flat as possible once again if you're looking to um, wear your unit up in a ponytail you won't have any problems with bulkiness or anything like that And I'm still curving the weft upwards. And then I'm just going back and doing the same thing as far as like the sewing technique. Um, another thing is I am laying the wefts a little bit closer. So instead of having a one finger width apart spacing i'm pretty much having the wefts sewn close together because like i said i want a full unit and that's the reason why i am sewing the wefts close together instead of uh spaced apart Last thing that I'm doing is pretty much sewing the last two, three tracks to close up the unit. And as you guys can see, you know, all you have to do is just keep sewing the tracks like back and forth, back and forth, making sure that when you get to the end, you are cutting the webs. Do not do the fold over method anymore. So I probably need to sew down two more tracks and then I will be done with my unit. So the next thing that I will be showing you guys is how to cut the excess uh, wig cap from underneath the frontal because you guys do not need that anymore. Because I know I got um, a few questions about do you keep that underneath? Do you cut it off? What do you do? Yes, you do cut the excess um, wig cap from underneath the frontal. And then after I do that, what I will do next is go ahead and um, wash the hair. And I will show you guys exactly what products I use to wash um, my units. But yeah. So I am on the last weft that I'm going to be sewing and then I will be done. The way that I sew the last weft is I make sure that I connect it to the back of the frontal. Do not sew your last weft on top of it because if you do and when you pull back the frontal it will be um, kind of bulky right there. So you don't want to do that. You just want to sew as close as pop possible and connecting just a little bit of the back of the frontal to your weft when you start sewing it down. So hopefully you guys can see this. So I'm sewing in the last weft. And I'm only taking like a, a piece of the back of the frontal. But you have to do what you have to know. Yeah. No, no, close your mouths, don't get fed oh, no. I hold out that stereo in your head oh, no. Think about it lying down and you better not Ooh, baby girl, I know you do what I know you have to It's so unfair, fair Okay, so this is the finished unit after I have sewn all the wefts in um, So I'm going to show you guys now how to cut the excess lace off Okay, 
okay so this is how you, the inside of your unit should look after you sewn in your webs as well as your frontal okay so like I said there is an excess piece which is here um, you do not need this at all um, you can easily cut it off and it won't um, mess up your wig unit or anything like that so the way that I cut it is of course I take my nippers or scissors I cut down the middle And I cut um, close to the back of the frontal, but I don't cut too close because you don't want to unravel the thread here. So I leave a little bit of the wig cap, the excess uh, wig cap. So I pretty much cut one side and then I go and cut the um, other side. I cut everything off so as I said I will go and wash the unit now um, when I do wash it I shampoo it as well as condition deep condition it let it sit with some conditioner for a little bit and then I actually let this I always let my wig sit or um, let it air dry I never use a blow dryer to dry the hair so let me show you guys what I'll be using to wash the Okay, so pretty much I always use the one and only Argon Oil Moisturize and Repair Shampoo, which looks like this. You guys can get this anywhere. You can get it from Sally's. You can get it from Amazon. And then I go in with their Moisture Repair Conditioner. So I always use these to wash um, my units. Um, if it's like a curly wig, I do go in with some Aussie Moisturizing Conditioner just to get the curls to pop. But anyways... Um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and wash this unit and then I'll come back and show you guys how I style it as well as, um, when they judge you, oh, no, no. just tell them that no one can judge you, no one should, no one should, no one should judge, no one should, no one should, girl, I gotta tell you, you the best. From time. I just had to get that off my chest. Hope you don't mind. No. I mean, who am I to judge you? Take your time, girl. I mean, who am I to rush you? Baby, fall in love with you. Oh. One time now for the gal, I'm up in the place. Yeah, they see us come through, get a squad, some space. Get down, get down, girl, can't nobody take no. Yeah. And if they try to tell you something, tell them fast some stairs or run up. Cause I ain't tryna be nobody, body, body. I ain't tryna tell you how to live in life. Do 
but you have to know yeah. No, no, close your mouths, don't get fed I hold out, hold that stereo in your head Think about it lying down and you better not Girl, I gotta tell you, you the best from time. I just had to get that off my chest. Hope you don't mind, no. I mean, who am I to judge you? Take your time, girl. I mean, who am I to rush you? Baby, fall in love with you. Oh. Okay, you guys, so this is pretty much the final look of my lace from wig that I showed you guys how to make. I really hope that um, this video helps you in some type of way with making your own custom wig units for yourself or um, for a customer or someone else. But yeah, um, I know this was a very long video, but I wanted to make sure that this was super detailed because I know I get a lot of questions from you guys and I really appreciate um, you guys reaching out to me, trying to ask me, um, you know, for help as far as like um, helping you with making your custom wig units. Um, I hope I went over everything. I think I was able to answer all of you guys' questions. If I didn't, you can always leave a comment down below in the comment section and let me know what I um, left out. But pretty much this is the end of the video i really hope you guys enjoyed this full detailed tutorial on how to make a lace front wig um if you guys do not know i am still selling a few wig units on my website if you guys are interested to get a custom wig made by me um i only have a few left once these run out i will not be selling any more so if you guys are interested in ordering i suggest you go ahead and hurry up and order because once it's sold out, it's pretty much over with, okay? So, um, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Um, also, if you guys do not know, this probably will be one of my last custom wig tutorials. I have a lot of them. So, um, I just wanted to make sure that this one was very uh, detailed and full. So, you guys are able to see start to finish on how to make a wig. After this, I don't think I will be posting any more custom wig tutorials. Um, if you have not checked out the previous ones that I posted, I will leave the playlist. I, I did create a playlist that has like pretty much all my wig tutorials. So I will um, link that up above as well as down below in the description section. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching again and I will see you guys in my next video. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh.